What's going on boys and girls? What's up world? Austin John Place here and today we're going to be analyzing the new Pokemon Direct. Further reminder, we are giving away a Nintendo Switch or $300 of eShop credit as well as a copy of Pokemon Sword or Shield. Be sure to stay tuned in the end of the video for more info. <laughs> As normal, we're going to be going through this footage almost scene by scene. We're going to be reviewing the trailer at quarter speed, so we're about 12 FPS, about the same frames per second that I get in Zelda in the Lost Woods. At the very beginning, we're treated to a whole bunch of cityscapes, and in which we're going to be seeing these large gyms appearing, also possibly a Pokemon Center, and Pokemon just kind of hanging out in the cities. That was one of the things that they added in Sun and Moon that was just something really nice to make it feel like the world was full and lived in and totally awesome. We also get images of like really cool architecture. Just straight up castles, homie. Oh, it's a shame your shirt doesn't have a Gyarados on it. Right here we have the champion's younger brother who uh, has too soft of eyes to become a Pokemon champion. That's known for a fact. And then just a little bit later we see a scene. This is the choose your starter screen that you're gonna be seeing at the very beginning of the game is gonna be like, y'all want Grookey, Score Bunny, or the best one, Sobble, or the best one, Grookey. This is the first generation that I'm not really wowed by the fire type. And then whoever you choose, apparently you fist bump them. Or maybe that's just Score Bunny. We get another scene of very early in the game at that purple house on the right hand side of your house, still in the Scotland area before making your way to the England area. There is a guy who looks like a trainer over here here on the right is in a very trainery stance. So maybe after you get your starter, you're gonna be heading over here to this house for something. We got this huge monument of three diglets inside of like a Roman pillar, train station, I don't know, crazy stuff. Nah, they're ruins, they're ruins. I love the layout and the architecture of this very modern, steampunky city with all the gears and everything turning. Really dope stuff. We get to see the professor's hot assistant with her super dope nails and Professor Willow with a bird cane because she's an old woman. And yes, the champion's younger brother is your rival. So apparently you're gonna be living near each other and then you're gonna be heading over over to the professor for your starters and other professory things and is she growing that's a weird looking plant this is sort of an interesting scene here and it reminds me of soon as you start up Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire once you start to head into the grass you can sneak up on a Pokemon for the chaining of them I don't know if we're gonna be getting that feature back yeah you see the exclamation mark and you immediately crouch down but then it ran over to them then apparently you found solid snake and we get the new the new sheep Pokemon and the scone and we got the angry turtle our trainer is gonna be catching the sheep, probably making himself some haggis. This is really interesting. We see this very quick clip and there's hearts coming off of him and he has a music note above him. So I think there's a very good chance that the interacting with your Pokemon is gonna be back. We're gonna be able to pet them and feed them. And then also back here, this looks like a tent. So I'm wondering when you're in the giant wildlands, if you're gonna be able to set up your own tent and camp out. And maybe that's like a mobile Pokemon center that you get access to your PC as well as your trading online functionality. This looks like a updated version of a scene that we saw in the previous trailer of these beautiful lush wheat meadows, except now we have some construction cones and you have this worker over here, this farm hand. We get this weird iceberg area. So in this scene, we can clearly see that the trainer has the, the super big bracelet on, beta maxing. We're already made to presume that this is somewhat later in the game because I mean, once you find trainers with sock and throw, they're like, what, like between 26 and 40 and you're gonna have yourself your big black skarmory, damn crows watching the wall. Get a really, really dope scene of zooming in on the character wall in the wildlands or the calm lands as i'm probably going to accidentally refer to it at least once where we see a whole bunch of wild pokemon just chilling wobbuffet but where's a ride on in a sandstorm which is really dope golurk and dust skull at nighttime and ghastlies so we're most likely getting day night cycles back which is awesome 
We have Gyarados here in the pond. Butterfreeze, a Mudsdale, he's a good pony. Tyranitar, Avalug. I'm probably saying some of these names wrong. So this is really interesting here. We see the bicycle return, which is awesome. Obviously we need a bicycle to traverse such a large area, but does this mean that we're not getting Poke Ride back? So we're not gonna be able to ride around a Tauros? We were already told that the big black crow is gonna be how we're gonna fast travel around so we can theorize that that's gonna be similar to how we used Charizard Poke Ride before. But now we have a bicycle that lets us ride around and then it also goes on water. That's dope. Now I don't know if this is a separate bicycle that you get at a later point or if just your bicycle by default when you go to water you're gonna be able to paddle through it. Which is pretty awesome. Fishing is back. Hooray. We have berry trees available instead of berry piles. I don't get this because like you're just standing on the side and you're whistling for Pokemon to come out of the grass. Maybe that's a way to get Pokemon that don't normally spawn there. Now we're treated to what appears to be a very dark looking castle slash building here on the left and sort of a Deadlands area. We have all these little pillars of light coming up that would infer that there's a raid. Now, I don't know if you're gonna need to all run to one specific light for the raid, or if the raid, the lights are gonna be circling where the raid is gonna be. The raid seem like a pretty interesting idea. I just hope that as a single player, you're gonna be able to challenge it. You ever notice that Flygon has a lot of representation in this game so far? I find that weird. And then the trainer uses the Betamax on Raichu, and then Raichu becomes the thickest. Over here at the gym this is when you're going up against the Grash Trainer. Who does he have six Pokemon, or that's just part of his outfit? He has one of the Betamax rings too. Now, I, th I thought this was a neat little detail. We have a Rotom over here, and then we also have a Rotom right here in the overlay. It looks like they're using Rotom as cameras in order to broadcast these battles, which is pretty neat. That's clearly a Rotom. And now we have Ditto Man with his Ultra Ball. That was an Ultra Ball, right? It looks like the giant Pokeballs are sort of like Premier Balls, but sort of have like a net pattern at the top. I'm interested to see what happens when larger Pokemon have the, the, the Dynamaxing effect. What happens if you do it on Whale Lord or Snorlax? or Dawnwing's Necrozma. Now, getting back to when they were talking about the wild area. This area, they do mention that you have free control over the camera when you are here. With that specific language, that makes it sound like that when we're in cities and just not in the wild area, we are not going to have free reign over the camera. And it's gonna be a fixed down perspective camera again, but only once we're in the wild area do we have full control of the camera. Kinda like Twilight Princess HD. How you get control of the camera, but then some places it's a fixed camera. The max raid battles seem really interesting on how that's gonna work. Additional accessories may be required for multiplayer mode. It sounds like you need to use the Switch's wireless LAN feature, play with other players. They say that you can play online and that Nintendo Switch service is required for that. So you're gonna be able to enter raids with friends because that sounds pretty dope. We have to meet the champion Leon. We're introduced to his Charizard, which is dope. Dope, his little brother. I love how they're using phones that are clearly Rodoms. The hot professor assistant. And then toward the end, we get to see the legendaries here. That's just a beautiful, majestic Pokemon. This is obviously the shield of Sword and Shield, which this shield design is incorporated beautifully into his head and where his mane would be, and then sticking out a little bit. And then Sword is just Wolf holding, holding a sword in his mouth. He's like, huh? It would also appear that despite the sword and the shield pattern, they sort of have a crown design on their head. Very regal legendary Pokemon. Now, they have the exact same color scheme, red, white, and blue with some gold. We have American Solgaleo, and we have Remix Suicune over here. I'm sure we're gonna see in the story if they work together if they're gonna be doing some weird fusing stuff, if they're gonna be viable on their own. There's just so much left to explore with these boys. And then also, I wanted to take a quick look at the press kit that went out to see if there's anything super useful in here, which we get high resolution pictures of the new Pokemon that were introduced to us, including the Crow. Here is the new Dynamaxing bracelet. We have our Rock Salamander, our Pollen Puff, our female trainer, Grookey in an action. 
that makes it look like it has three arms? That's weird. Remember when I said he has soft eyes? He has a soft personality too. Very much living in his brother's shadow. His older brother. The guy she tells you to not worry about. You. Dope art of the legendaries here. Which shield looks much more vicious than sword. With his mouth open and the large shield display here. Ah, uh, really, really dope. We get artwork of the Max Raid battle. A bunch of random screenshots. Apparently when you enter an office building, there's just a Badoo chill in there. He's our incense. Makes the office smell nice. Here we get a really cool shot of the trainer customization option at the beginning of the game where to avoid specifically stating genders, it says choose a photo from the lineup. And we can see in this slight contrast that it says zero two. I assume step one is your name. Step two is choose a photo that most closely represents yourself. By the color of everyone's eyes, it's very clear that we're gonna get contact options again because that's not fun. Oh, nice. We get a full look at the UI and what it's gonna look like. Now, keep in mind, this is all early stuff, but I love it. It's flat, it's clean. I like, look at this flat white. Look at how modern this text, this font is. How small these balls are. I would have never assumed, would have never thought that they would go for such a clean, clean modern look. How beautiful is that? We see a scene of a Grookey in a tree with Barry. Score bunny in a battle. It looks like the backdrop has a lot more depth to it than it did on Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, that there's layers to it and it's not just like, here's a flat image of a backdrop of a city. That was pretty weak. Oh, why is he crying? What's wrong, buddy? Oh, and then for wild battles, we now have an option to quick throw a ball. Also, we see that Y is for info, so we could assume that the info panel that we've seen before that shows all the current stat changes is gonna be available, which is nice. Definitely a fan of that. Oh yeah, look at this Corvin Knight. Look at him, level 60. Ah, here it is. Here's the bicycle. Now for some reason it has like this weird electricity surrounding it. And then if we look in the bottom left corner, Y is some sort of scanning device or wireless device. We don't know if this is for the switches online functionality or if this is gonna be for looking or scanning for Pokemon in the nearby area, something like that. Also, his bicycle has pegs on it, which is really cool. That's a cool bicycle. I love how the lighting, like all of these giant spotlights are being very, very noticeable. Although if you had these giant spotlights from every single corner, you wouldn't have this four directional shadow, that's for sure. <laughs> he looks very upset. Oh, perfect. So we see literally right next to each other, everything. Grookey's four moves, Scratch, Razor Leaf, Growl, and Taunt turn into Max Strike, Max Overgrowth, and Max Guard. So it sounds like similar to Z moves, whatever move you have is gonna change into something else. So we could assume that all normal type physical moves like scratch, things like that, are gonna turn into max strike. And then grass type moves like razor leaf turn into max overgrowth. And whatever the move is based off of is the base power plus X amount of that. Max guard seems to be for taunt, uh, growl and taunt, so those are status moves, so that's what max guard is gonna be doing. All right, so they're combining mega evolutions because you turn into a more powerful version of yourself. We can clearly see that you gain an additional 20 HP. We go from 41 to 61, and then all the moves change. We could presume that they become more powerful. I'm a big fan. Can you Dynamax a Mega? It also looks like Grookey is holding a giant Dynamax uh, ball at the end of his stick, which is cool. We are getting a whole bunch of information and I am getting excited. We also see the bicycle in water mode. Love bicycle water mode. This area feels very Akala Breath of the Wildy. This area is beautiful. I swear, Pokemon looked at Breath of the Wild and got inspired and they were like, we gotta do something like that. Maybe not the whole game, but a lot of it. And then we're ending it off with individual artwork of the legendaries. Rodon phone. Rodon phone in landscape mode. I'm gonna be taking a closer inspection and look at the trailer for anything else that we've missed. Additional videos coming soon. Guys, a reminder, we are giving away a Nintendo Switch and a copy of Pokemon Sword or Shield or $300 of eShop credit. Be sure to check the link down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.